Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration, Wednesday, June 12, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Numbers chapter 22, reading from verse 21 to 31. And it says, And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and a sword drawn in his hands. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either either to the right and or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, I am not, am not I thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and a sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Amen. We thank God this morning for his word. And this is a very serious message for us this morning. If we know the story of Balaam, we remember when he was paid by the king of Moab to go and to curse the children of Israel. And so... He was on his way to do so. And, of course, the Lord, in his wisdom and his mercy, tried to prevent him from committing such a sin. And it doesn't matter what the Lord did. It seems like it could not get, he could not get Balaam's attention. And for him to realize that what he was about to do, there was no turning back. You see greed? Greed and the love of money will bring a lot of us on a very destructive path. And it will cause a lot of us to lose our souls or to commit some great sin because we are greedy. And because we have no self-control or as they would say we have no backbone to stand up with integrity and courage and faith for God Balaam he was a priest a man who was supposed to know what is right from wrong a leader someone who should be following the instruction of God and here he was about to commit this great sin against God. But you know what I love about God is that even when we make foolish mistakes and even when we are going down a destructive path, he somehow provides a way of escape for us. If we only take it, often time we will save ourselves a world of grievances. And so here Balaam was on his way. And so he started to ride his donkey or his ass. And it was a female donkey based on the reading. 
And while he was on his way, the angel of the Lord came and stood in the way of the donkey and Balaam. And he had his sword drawn, which is to suggest that if Balaam had ever passed that angel, he would have died instantly because the angel came to kill him if he didn't turn back. That is why he came with sword drawn, which signifying that he was about to act. So it was a very crucial time. And so the donkey had sense enough to know that this was dangerous for him to go across. And so the donkey seen the angel. That's why they are they are we say animal have a sixth sense. Because animal oftentimes can sense when danger is coming, but human seems to be clueless. And so we walk right in the middle of danger and we welcome danger like it is something out of a fairy tale. But the donkey realized that this was going to be bad for him if he ever crossed that path. And so the donkey was trying to spear him. God using the donkey to save Balaam's life. And what did Balaam do? Because he was so bent and doing what is wrong. He was so consumed by darkness now. It's like he could not see the light. And so he insists, even though the donkey, these three times, tried to prevent him from going. These three times. What, what did he do? He beat the donkey. Beat the donkey, you know. And no matter what the donkey did to stop him. And the final time, the donkey even threw him down upon the ground. Sometimes God have to throw us down in order to save us. And even then, we still want to crawl into danger just to do what is wrong. Mercy. Why is it that men and women are so stubborn? And God in his mercy and his love is saying to us, Turn back now. Turn back now. I do not want to have to destroy you. Turn back now. Don't do it. Don't steal. Don't kill. Just don't do it. Whatever it is that you are planning to do that you know is wrong, turn back now. And don't do it. Because when you do it, you may never have the opportunity to go backward. In fact, you can't go backward. And so Balaam, Balaam was given three chances. And if God did not in his mercy open his eyes, he would have been a dead man. All because of what? Self and the flesh and money. He was about to lose his soul. He was about to lose his soul. And for what? Greed? You are telling me that you could not say no to the king? Or were you afraid that the king was going to do something to you? Well, let him go ahead and do it. You know what is right. You are going to allow your friend to tell you to do something that you know is wrong. And you are going to do it to fit in? No, God don't stand for that. It doesn't matter who comes to you and tell you to do something. If you know the thing is wrong, you need to stand your ground. Because at the end of the day, do you believe that these folks who are influencing you to make bad choices, they are going to take the punishment for you? Not one of them, not one of them will take the punishment for you. They will all run away and you will stand alone in misery, suffering all because of what? For what? And the part that even get me even more, we know that animal can't talk, right? But the animal start to talk, the donkey start to talk to the man, have a conversation with the man, 
Say that, look here, man. Why are you beating me? Huh? Why are you beating me? Haven't I been faithful to you over all these years? From the moment you get me until now, I have always been faithful as I have always done good by you. But now you are treating me with such abuse. He was so upset. All because he wasn't getting to have his own way or to go do what he wanted to do. And he threatened the donkey to say, you lucky says it's just a switch may have. Because if I had a sword, I'll just kill you. Oh my God. Hey, when a man is bent and doing evil, you know, I'm telling you, you know, there's no one who can shift his attention. God himself has to come and stand up just like the angel come. I'm telling you, friends, sin is no game and God must not be trifled with because I'm telling you that he is a God of love and he is a God of mercy, but never forget that he is also a God of judgment. And because of his stubbornness, God ha had to open his eyes and say, this is the reason why the donkey won't pass. So you there abusing the donkey, not knowing that the donkey just saved your life. Because if you had ever crossed this path today, today, you would have lost your life. And I say to you, friends, what is it that you are doing now? Are thinking about doing that you know is wrong? Stop it. Don't do it. I beg of you, don't do it. Because it may be something you cannot come back from. And once it's out there, it's out there. Don't let sin get the better of you. Surrender yourself to God and ask for forgiveness for even having the thought to do it. God is able to give you strength to overcome your weakness. Don't use your humanity as an excuse to commit sin against God. Because when you do that, it won't win you any favor with God, I tell you. You think he's going to say, okay, because you're human, let me just let this one slide. Sin is sin, and God will deal with all sin the same way. So may we take a page from Balaam's book, and may we see the roadblocks in our way that God has set up to prevent us from making a decision that is going to be detrimental to us. Think about that. I pray for you this morning and I pray for myself. May God help us not to ignore the red flags. We have the tendency of ignoring red flags even when they, they, they are up in our eyes, up in our face. We ignore them completely. Let us not continue to do that because one day the Lord is going to say enough is enough and you don't want that pronunciation on your life while you're standing in opposition to God. Amen? So may God help us. And may God continue to give us wisdom to do what is right and to make better choices for Him. Amen.